which if you guys ever see me at the English Garden laying there with no bikini top on, please don't say nothing to me because I'm going to have to then joke, go jump off a cliff. Hi everyone, what is up? My name is Haley. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you did not know, now you do. Hey you guys. What's up? Welcome to my bedroom. <laughs> I've been kicked out of the living room, you guys. Mike is playing his Xbox. It's his new joy, his new Shotzi, and I've just been put on the back burner, so here we are in the bedroom. I don't know how I feel about this, letting you guys see me on the bed, but hey, welcome. We're family now. But yeah, in today's video, y'all, I'm gonna be talking about things you can do in Germany that you can't do in the United States. Some of these points I've gone over very briefly in past videos, but I wanted to make a little bit more in-depth video regarding these topics. And regarding the laws and regulations and rules around these things, I would greatly appreciate it if you guys could help me with some of them because there was a lot of gray area for a lot of these things. I couldn't find a very definitive yes or no or what was right and what was wrong or what was allowed and what was not allowed. So if you know more than me, please let me know in the comment section. But yeah, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram. It is the holiday season, you guys, and it's free, and it's doing something kind, and Santa's watching you to see if you're kind, and if you're not kind, you're gonna get coal for Christmas, so. Hmm, might as well do that. So yeah, the first thing you guys is going to be the FKK. If you are not a German speaker, you probably don't know what FKK means. I'm gonna try my best to say it in German, but I don't know if it's right or not, and I'm pretty sure it's Freie Körperkultur, which means free body culture which basically means the nudity community. I feel like this video is going to get demonetized. So I'm debating if I should say the N word or not. Imagine Haley coming over to Europe. I will not even just say Germany. I will say Europe in 2015, not really knowing anything but what I've been taught in the United States, which body, human anatomy, and all that good stuff is a very taboo or vulgar topic, especially when it comes to the nudity aspect of it. Coming over to Germany and spending my first summer here and seeing people without any clothing on was shocking to me. And I was literally, you guys, probably wanting to hide underneath a rock because I could not imagine that people were so open and free and comfortable with just letting it all hang out. <laughs> I mean, many years have fast forwarded, have fast forward since that time. Like I said, that was in 2015. So in 2020, I'm pretty open. I might even say that I take part in this FKK. My mom, Mike, and my grandma watching this are probably like, like, oh my gosh. No, but seriously, I'm really okay with going topless, with going bottomless, going full on Haley out there when it comes to summer vacations. If I'm in Germany, if I'm in Spain, if I'm in Italy, if it's allowed, I usually really don't care. And I'm actually comfortable and okay with it. Which, if you guys ever see me at the English Garden laying there with no bikini top on, please don't say nothing to me because I'm gonna have to then joke, go jump off a cliff. But if you're going to the United States and you wanna take part in FK, that's really not going to happen or be allowed in most of the places there. I would say like 90% of the United States, you're not allowed to go any type of non-clothing anywhere, but you could get in trouble. You could get a fine. Some people could get like um, registered as sex offenders for something like this. So you just have to be careful. The next points are gonna be about drinking, selfing. So if you don't want these points, you might as well click away because ugh, I'm gonna be talking about drinking a little bit. The first one is going to be being able to buy affordable, cheap wine. In the United States, I will not trust you if you tell me that you can buy affordable wine for two to five dollars. I will know that your taste buds are whack, you have no sense of taste, you don't enjoy the finer things in life, and you enjoy the taste of Robitussin medicine because that's the only thing that comes from two to five dollars bottles of wine. Europe is the wine capital of the world, you guys. You have Italy, you have Portugal, you have France, you have Spain, you have Germany, all like at your footstep, which means you have relatively high quality, affordable wine. That kind of stuff is not happening in the United States. The closest thing you have is California. And sometimes California cannot hold a candle to the Europe. When I came to the supermarkets here for the first time and saw the wine selection and saw things as low as one euro, of course, those are usually cooking wines or something. But when I saw stuff like two euros, five euros for a nice size, decent size bottle of wine, I was like, wow. And sometimes I would buy one just to taste it out and see what it was like. And it was relatively tasty. It didn't taste like a rotten cotton ball. And in Germany, I can seriously buy something 
may not be the best tasting or a Michelin, Michelin Sterne restaurant wine, but it's good. You can drink it. Man kann das machen, you know. Schmeckt lecker. The next one is going to be drinking on the street, which is something that I need a little bit of help with regarding this because I've talked about it before, but I really don't know the laws behind it. And I'm mostly speaking about Bayern because that's where I've seen all this stuff happening. But usually you can drink on the street publicly with no repercussions. I have gone out on the S-Bahn, on the streets, on the way to certain events, and I've always seen other people drinking. The cops are usually, you know, standing around if it's a big event, if it's a big, you know, influx of people traveling from one place to another, because usually when you go to Fußballspiele, I've been to a few FC Bayern games, and on the way a lot of people are drinking. And the cops usually don't say anything to you, it's just if you're too rowdy, if you're too rough, if you're, you know, cursing, if you're being way too crazy, then they might say something to you. But like I said, this is a gray area for me where I don't really know what the laws are. I've taken part in this, never got in trouble. I've talked to cops with beers in my hand and they don't say anything and they say viel Spaß. The next point is you can drink a small glass of wine or a glass of beer during your lunch break. This might be just a Bayern thing but I've seen many times people go on their lunch break. You'll see especially in the city at some of the restaurants and cafes that serve wine, little spirits and whatnot. You'll see people drinking. They're going back to work later, but no one bats an eye at it. I remember the first time I experienced this, I was out with someone and they were drinking beer and I was like, oh my gosh, are you, is it, like are you off work are you done they're like no i'm going back i'm like you're allowed to drink or maybe it's just normal lies in the society that i live in and buy on that beer is like an integral part of people's life and it's considered a food and not an actual alcoholic beverage so maybe that has something to do with it but like i said it's just something that you cannot do in the united states i've had multiple jobs where i have to like unto i have to sign a contract or my work contract that basically says i'm not allowed to drink from the hours that i'm working which includes my lunch break. It's like a loophole sort of because you're not technically working but you're not allowed to consume alcohol while you're on the job or when you're on the job or in any way consumption of alcohol is not allowed when you're working. So yeah, something different that you could probably do in Germany that may be okay in the United States but is not as common. The next point is going to be that you can basically take a train anywhere in Germany or all over Europe. And I'm talking about major cities here because comparing public transportation is really unfair. I've, I think I've said this in videos before but it's very unfair fair because the infra infrastructure, oh my gosh I can't speak, of the United States is so bad. The car industry is like lobbying against it so it's never going to happen most likely in the United States. But when comparing traveling from major cities or to and from major cities oh my gosh y'all it is not possible to have an affordable decent timed um, clean train ride to any major city in the United States to put it into perspective I traveled from Munich to Paris one year and I think it was 500 miles it was a little over 500 miles and it took six to seven hours I changed once but other than that the train went you know to Paris my end station was Paris now to compare that to the United States, I traveled somewhere in Florida to Atlanta. And can you guys guess <laughs> how long it took? It was the same distance from Munich to Paris, so you would think it would be six to seven hours. No, it took a whopping 12 hours and I had to change three times and I had to take a Greyhound bus to deliver me to the next station because there was no connection to the train stations that they were I guess driving to made no sense you guys and I had to walk I think it was like one to two miles in between all of this stuff when I tell you it was the most confusing and difficult thing I've ever done in my life and it costs four times the amount of money that I would pay in Germany in Europe to travel from one major city to the next Ugh, it's not possible it's a lot cheaper and more affordable to a drive your own car get an uber probably fly rent a car or anything like that so yeah I find it to be very sad because I actually like traveling in trains especially in Europe I guess because we have such beautiful scenery but we have that in the United States as well but you can't really see it in a train you know paying attention looking out the window <sighs> I love it so much. The next and final point, you guys, which is also a point that I need a little bit of help with because, like I said, this was a very gray area. There were a lot of numbers and information spit out, but nothing really definite. In Germany, you're most likely going to be able to go grocery shopping without completely buying GMO 
GMOs, GMO foods, is that, would that be considered GE foods? Genetically modified or genetically engineered foods. When looking at the United States, I looked at the Center for Food Safety for the information and the numbers and the percentages that I got. I think they said there was a study or an estimate of 75% of all food in retail shops or like grocery shops in the United States is made out of GMOs or genetically engineered items. A lot of countries in Europe, I'm not specifically talking about Germany, ban GMOs altogether. In Germany there are some exceptions, but they follow the EU trade restrictions or laws and regulations and they are very strict when comparing it to the United States standards. When I read about, you know, why they didn't want them and what the hazard would be, it was not public health. It wasn't, you know, human health or anything like that. It was about the detrimental adverse effects that it has on the environment. And that I found to be very interesting that that was the reason that they try to ban or try to get rid of or not produce GMOs in such huge amounts. That's all of the information that I found regarding it, you guys. I know there's a bunch. I read so many articles. I read so many scholarly journal excerpts and something and all that good stuff, but it was very information overload for my brain. I think that's it though. I think I've talked a lot, you guys. I don't think I have anything else to say though because it's been very long. So yeah, thank you for watching. If you know anything else that's allowed in Germany that's not allowed in the United States, that's not so stereotypical, you guys. You can let me know in the comment section other than that, thank you so much for watching. Happy holiday season. I love you guys and bye-bye.